Hello everyone. In the last lecture, we have seen thermodynamics. Its revision work zero law of thermodynamics and the first law of thermodynamics. So we will start with last lecture. In the last lecture, we have seen what is meant by thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is an experimental science which is based on a very small number of principles and it gives a macroscopic description of a system in terms of a measurable properties. And we have seen the what is mean by system surrounding, then isolated system, closed system, open system. After that, we have seen the zero law of thermodynamics. And zero law of thermodynamics states that if two systems are separately in thermal equilibrium with a third, they will also be in thermal equilibrium. That is, A is related to B, B is related to C. Obviously, C is related to A. And from zeroth law, we may deduce that in thermal equilibrium, a property called temperature exists and are in equilibrium. Then, we have seen first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics states that we cannot create the energy and destroy the energy. But the energy can be converted from one form of energy to the another form of energy. After that, we have seen the various types of processes, isothermal process, isochoric process, isobaric process and so on. Then we have started with work and work is equal to F into dx. The F represents the force and dx represents the displacement that is the when we apply one newton force the object moves to one meter that is the joule this is definition of joule and the joule is a unit of work so f into dx f is a force and dx is the displacement and W is the work. After that, we have seen work is not a state function. It is a path function. It is path dependent, not depends on states. Then we have seen the compression type and expansion type of works. In today's lecture, we will see next type of work because work is of four types. Work of compression and expansion, tree expansion, Expansion against constant pressure and reversible expansion. So, see free expansion. Free expansion occurs only when external pressure is equal to zero and the opposing force is not present. You can consider a cylinder. It is packed like our water bottle. And in between this bottom or a cylinder, there is a membrane. Below that membrane, there is a gas field. And just make a hole to the membrane. Obviously, the gas below the membrane comes into the upper layer also. That's why whole bottle or whole cylinder is fulfilled with the gas now. So, this is an example of a free expansion. We does not apply any type of force, but this is a free expansion. It happens on its own. So, at that time, the pressure is equal to zero or external pressure is equal to zero and there is no any opposing force. That's why Overall free expansion is equal to 0. And here the end state would be the same if the membrane were replaced by a very less wet piston. And then the process is called a free expansion. So free expansion occurs when the pressure or the external pressure is equal to 0 or constant. 
this diagram shows the free expansion so see this is our system and the system is at initial position at that time volume of the system is vi and when system expands this gas flows into this also so whole container is fulfilled with the gas only and volume it changes from vi to vm this is the final volume when external pressure is equal to zero this is a expansion type of work and the work done by a gas when it expands a constant pressure p external is equal to the shaded area in this example of an indicator diagram and this plot is of external pressure versus volume volume changes from vi to vf this is denoted by dv so area is equal to external pressure into dv and our definition of work is also w is equal to p delta v so this is a work done now <coughs> dw is equal to minus p external into dv and after taking derivative of above equation limits are vi to vf w will be minus p external into delta v delta shows the change or the initial and final positions <coughs> then our next type of work is here isothermal reversible expansion here we can consider a perfect gas for the study and for the isothermal process delta t is equal to 0 <coughs> and our boyle's law is pv is equal to nrt we want to allow p so just transfer this v to the right side so pressure is equal to nrt upon v v is the volume as the stage of expansion t is the temperature which is constant for isothermal reversible expansion and this type of expansion follows the work of irreversible isothermal expansion of a perfect gas from vi to vf when the temperature is t so we can take a equation w is equal to minus nrt into integration of dv by v and limits are vi to vf because volume changes from initial to final state so just uh, finding integration the value comes ln of v and the limits are vi to vf so just put limits here and find out this equation w is equal to minus nrt ln of vf upon vi <coughs> when the final volume is greater than the initial volume means as we have seen in the previous diagram final volume is greater than initial volume this diagram vf is greater than vi at that time the logarithm will be positive and work done will be less than zero and when there is a reverse condition means final volume is less and initial volume is greater that means compression work done is greater than zero in this case work done by the system on the surrounding and the internal energy change of system decreases for this case now the last type of work is work of adiabatic expansion when we consider an adiabatic process so obviously change in heat is equal to zero that is dq is equal to zero and our first law of thermodynamics is du is equal to dq plus dw that is change in internal energy is equal to change in heat plus change in work done so du is equal to 0 plus dw that's why delta u is equal to dw or du is equal to dw this is our equation and from this equation we can calculate the change in internal energy between the same initial and final states means work done is equal to change in internal energy and work of adiabatic expansion is calculated by using this equation work done is equal to because our equation is delta u is equal to dw so dw is equal to integration of delta u so integration goes from ui to uf that is initial and final states and du is equal to we know the definition of heat capacity 
which is equal to du by dt at constant volume or constant pressure this is our heat capacity so du is equal to cv dt so just put instead of du cv into dt cv is a heat capacity so cv take outside the integration and put limits integration growth from i to f dt so temperature obviously initial is t i and final is t f or 1 to 2 when you can put limits it will be t2 minus t1 so w is equal to cv in bracket t2 minus c1 so this is the work of adiabatic expansion now we have seen all types of works and now we will find out one type of work by using problem so see here the problem which is based on the reversible isothermal expansion for this type of expansion we will find out the work so see the question is here calculate the amount of work done for a perfect gas when its volume vi is equal to 1 changes to vf is equal to 2 and the data is given here initial volume vi is equal to 1 final volume vf is equal to 2 and number of moles of perfect gas is equal to 1 and the molar gas constant value is 8.314 joule per kelvin and the t is a temp thermodynamic temperature which is equal to 298 kelvin and now we have all the values just take the equation of isothermal reversible expansion this equation W is equal to minus N into R into T ln of Vf upon Vi. N is equal to 1, R is equal to 8.314 and temperature is 298, Vf is 2 and Vi is 1. Just values are written here. And the value of W comes minus 1717.32 joules. And we want work done in kilojoule. That's why convert it into kilo. So, W is equal to minus 1.717 kilo joules. So, this is the work for adiabatic process, free expansion and isothermal reversible expansion.